Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a special edition of the LinkedIn Podcast, your place uh, for all the Eagles talk on the Sideline Sports Network, um, available on all social media, available on Stream TV, uh, Roku TV, and all of our platforms here at Sideline Sports Network. Today, I'm joined by a special guest. I have uh, Marnie Schneider that's joining me. Uh, she's an author. She's a philanthropist. She's a Philadelphia native. Um, so we're definitely looking forward to having a good conversation with her today. Uh, Marnie, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Thank you, James. I'm excited to be here. You know, love talking about Philadelphia and the Eagles and the Phillies and all sorts of good stuff. Yep. Right. Huge game uh, for the Phillies tonight. Looking to go back to the NLCS. Uh, but I just want to start off by asking you a little bit about yourself. Um, obviously, you're an author, you're a philanthropist. Um, sports has been a big part of your life, from what I understand. So, uh, just just tell me a little bit a little bit about that. All right. Well, so I grew up in Philadelphia, and yes, yeah, sports, in particular, the Philadelphia Eagles, have been a huge part of my life. My grandfather Leonard Toes was the owner of the Philadelphia Eagles from the late '60s through the mid '80s. And uh, my mom, Susan Toes, ran the team for my grandfather. And to this day, she's still the first and only female vice president, general counsel, and um, general manager of a professional football team. So I'm very proud of my mom's accomplishments. And in addition to that, of course, you know, love being a, a Philadelphia fan. Right. So that, that experience for you with your grandfather uh, running the team, and from what I also understand, um, he was a part of the the Ronald McDonald Foundation as well. Yes, that is definitely true. It's a, um, a great organization that was started in Philadelphia in the mid-70s, a football player on the Philadelphia Eagles, a guy named Fred Hill. His daughter was diagnosed with leukemia, and so they started a foundation called the Eagles Fly for Leukemia, and then that turned into, although Eagles Fly for Leukemia stayed around, and I think it's still around, but that turned into also finding a place and building a foundation for families to stay when their children were in the hospital. And so that turned into the very first Ronald McDonald House in 1974. And now over almost 50 years later, there's houses all over the world and it's a, a charity that is very near and dear to my heart. Yeah, that's absolutely amazing stuff. And when you talk about the Eagles organization, they seem to be an organization that's uh, really in tune with their community and like trying to make a difference like that. Like, like you mentioned with the Ronald McDonald Foundation and, you know, they also have their uh, autism thing that they started uh, a few years ago, which has been very successful for them. So what would you say about the Eagles organization and, you know, how they try to make a difference? What, what makes them different than, you know, any other organization in the National Football League? Well, I would say this, that I think that all the teams in the National Football League, you know, do everything they can to make a difference. Certain mm -hmm. teams, I think, just have a better they have a better understanding of what fits their needs and really then make sure that they do everything they can to make a difference. So certainly with the Philadelphia Eagles, they've done an incredible job with the autism community. Autism is also something that's very near and dear to my heart. My roommate from college, her son, Hugh, is autistic. And I and I know the kind of um, responsibility that that's put on Stacy. So doing anything to find a cure for autism, finding ways to help families with autistic children, and really just supporting and encouraging the community is something really beautiful. And so I'm very proud that the Eagles have you know, picked up the ball literally and run with it and yeah. are making a difference. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing stuff that the Eagles are doing. So uh, your relationship with your grandfather and obviously uh, being around the team like you were, how has that really impacted your life now and, you know, your your pursuit of trying to use sports to, to make impact on – you know, people in your community? Well, you know, the one thing that I would say about my mom and my grandfather is that they made people around them feel safe and important. And so I was able to watch that organically happen. So you were safe around Leonard Toes and you were safe around Susan, my mother, to be whoever you wanted to be, to be whatever you wanted to be. And so I think that that's something that I'm so grateful for. And over the past couple of years, what we've done is we've started a children's book series to celebrate and highlight different cities all over the country that have professional football teams. And so it's just a way to give back. And reading is a great coping skill and playing is a great mm -hmm. coping skill. And so 
finding ways to get kids reading and playing. That's really something, a huge passion and initiative of mine. And so through writing my kids books, through writing Football Freddy and Fumble the Dog Game Day, um, each book takes you on a tour through a different city and then making sure that kids in that community have access to those books uh, is something that has been really special and very important and fun for me also. So you're just inspired to make a difference for these kids that, uh, you know, using sports to do that. So what are like, what are some other ways that someone could use sports to be impactful in their community? Even if, even if they're not, um, you know, a part of the NFL or something like that, like what's another way that someone could say, Hey, you know what? Sports have been an important part of my life. How can I use this to impact the community positively, whether it be children, whether it be other people in the community? What do you think about that? Well, I think that that is a beautiful thing. I think that sports really are the universal language, and that's one of the reasons why I love writing about sports. But I think if you want to go do something, go find a community to go play with children in that community. Go read to kids. Go volunteer your time. I, I think that also doing things that where you give back, it, it always is ends up being a gift for me. Whenever somebody says to me, can you help me? And then I end up doing that. I'm the one that feels like I got, like that I was right. the one that got the help. It's just how it goes. So I think finding ways to give back whatever it is, you know, turning on a football game, teaching somebody about the sport, teaching somebody about the game of football, football, uh, like, like uh, you know, like Steve Zabel said, is really, it's always, it's, it's like the game of life. It really is. And I love football. You get chances to get more chances. And unless you really screw it up, you're going to get more chances. And so I think that just using sports as a backdrop to make a difference is something that I've really been able to um, to benefit from. But I think everybody can just going out there and reading to kids, playing with kids, vo volunteering, coaching, all of those things make such a huge difference in the, in the lives of, of children and families and communities. Right. I really don't think people understand how much that's true, how much sports can be um, so impactful. A lot of people look at sports and say, this is just a game, which, which is going to bring me to my next question. So I think this has come up a lot for me, at least. When it comes to sports, I feel that a lot of people do not really take it so much seriously, like as another field. Uh, so in society, I'm not taking anything from another field lawyers, doctors, things like this, everything has a place in the society. But a lot of people saying, you know, sports, you know, it, it's for fun and stuff. So cannot really have like really a career path with this because in the end, it's just a game. So um, for me, I feel that it's not only a game. I feel like there's more avenues you can take with it to have a career and, you know, make an impact with your career too. So uh, what do you think about that? Do you think, what would you say to somebody that doesn't really feel that sports is a legitimate uh, career path for someone to take? I think there's so many opportunities in sports. So I would strongly suggest them to investigate, you know, what they want to do in sports. But there's so many different things. Obviously, being a professional athlete or being on the playing field in that way, that's a very small group. But there's so many things you can do in sports. You can do marketing in sports. You can do ticket sales in sports. Anything that you're bringing, adding value to, you are going to be wanted in that community, whatever it is. You can work in concessions. You can work in fashion and sports. You can be a sports reporter, a sports journalist. There are so many things. Right. And, I think that, and there's so many leagues. It's not just, you know, the National Football League. There's so many leagues, whether it's new leagues like pickleball or the NBA or Major League Baseball or Minor League Baseball. Somebody that really wants to get a start and really actually roll up their sleeves and, and get involved in sports. I always suggest going to work for a Minor League Baseball team because you get to learn every single bit of the business when you're in minor league baseball. So I think that anybody, if you want to be in sports, there's so much opportunity there. Look, you're doing a podcast. Now there's so many availabilities to do podcasts and be a producer of a podcast. There's just a, a, a plethora of options if you want to be in sports. And then charity also. A lot of professional athletes have their charities. So go find an athlete and go partner up and raise money and build playgrounds and get equipment for kids and do cool things like that. Yeah, I think that's a fantastic answer to that question because I don't think I just don't think a lot of people understand how many 
um, avenues there is that you can take <laughs> that you can take in this business. Uh, not again, not taken away from any other career path that people take. I think everything has a place in society and everything serves a purpose, but sports is definitely a legitimate uh, career path for sure. So yeah, uh, I want to talk a little bit about, and, I mean, look at how far, how far health and nutrition have come yeah. in the past decade. I mean, if you go into a professional football locker room these days, every single drink is going to be customized to that athlete. Whereas before it was just have a smoothie or not even. So there's so many cool things that you can do if you want to be in sports. I mean, ev- so many things. I love it. Yeah. Sports is so special. So I want to just talk a little bit about, uh, the Eagles and the team this season. So the team is starting 5-0 and this season. They started 5-0 and last year. But still, there's a lot of people that are saying there's concerns for this team. So how do you feel about that? Do you think the team is going to be fine? Do you think they're going to go in the right direction? Um, how are you feeling about the team so far from what you've seen? I think they look great. I mean, of course there's concerns. There's always concerns. I mean, my biggest concern is, you know, can they stay healthy? That's really the Mm -hmm. biggest concern that any fan really needs to have. All the other stuff is basically what the coaches are going to work on and what they're working on in the film room. But the only concern a fan really needs to have is can they stay healthy, which I think that they can. And again, that comes down to training and practicing and nutrition and travel, you know, all these things that that kind of the travel process. But, but I think that the Eagles are doing great. Sometimes it, what, what you see, the end score doesn't necessarily reflect the actual game. And I think Mm -hmm. that people kind of get hung up on certain things when it comes to their professional football teams and things that they, that they're really passionate about. And that's great. But I believe that the Eagles, from what I've seen, they're doing great. They have a great team. I mean, they've made improvements. Some games are a little bit too close. Maybe that's what people say. Oh, whatever. But you know what? It doesn't matter because it's all in the win column. And you can learn from those games when they're a little bit close too, and and figure out where to make the adjustments. If there are, if there is anything that the Eagles need to do, it's tiny adjustments. I mean, they're, they're, they're doing great. Yeah. I mean, at the end of the day, the result is uh, the important thing. The team's five and oh, Jalen Hurts always saying, you know, keep the main thing, the main thing. And the main thing is winning games. But one thing about the Eagles this season that has been brought up a lot is the uh, the short yards play, the quarterback sneak, or some people call it the brotherly shove. Some people call it the push push. Some people think that this play is dangerous and should be removed from the league. So what are your thoughts about this play, the controversy that's surrounding it? Uh, I just feel like this is a subject that has – come up a lot when it comes to the Eagles team and not only just the Eagles team, but, you know, around the whole league, uh, teams are trying to run it, not really having the same success like the Eagles. So what are your thoughts about the whole, you know, controversy surrounding that? Football is a sport that is not for the faint of heart, period, end of subject. So the Mm -hmm. fact that the Eagles can execute the brotherly shove, the quarterback sneak to it's it, that they can do it so well. I think that that's why people are, are upset by it because they make it look kind of easy. And we all know it's not easy. It's definitely not Certainly easy. Not. So it, it's no. However, I think that yes, whenever you're suited up to play, there's an element of, is this going to be, how is this going to impact the players? How is this going to impact the position players? But I, I think that they, they know how to do it. I think other teams that are doing it that don't have the finesse that the Eagles have, I think that's where injuries, sure, I think injuries are probably going to happen, but they're going to happen in other plays too. It's, they're going to happen in running plays. They're going to happen in passing plays. They're going to happen just, I mean, just walking out to the field, you could hurt yourself. Right. I mean, you never know what's going to happen. Contact injuries are, are often way worse than than this kind of stuff. So I think that the brotherly shove is a great play. The Eagles have mastered it. Obviously, other teams and other people are going to say, oh, it's whatever. But I, I think that, uh, again, when you're doing something at that high level, there's always uh, – there's always an a element to maybe getting injured, but probably I think that the Eagles seem to know it, how to how to handle this play and to keep everybody safe. And they want everybody to stay healthy. That's their goal. Yeah, yeah. I think I think you're absolutely right about that. I think that it comes down to 
Uh, the Eagles are just very effective at this, so the play has become somewhat automatic. But you look around the league, the Eagles are running this play at like a 92% success rate. And then the rest of the league, 81%. So there's quite a bit of a difference. So it's not as easy as it looks, and I don't really think it gives them the competitive advantage like a lot of people think. Right. I mean, the one thing I will say about the brotherly shove is that there's so much tape on it now. Our defense is going to start really dissecting how they do it. But however, it, it does, you know, they're giving them, they're, they're, they're showing them how, how they do it. But so far, no one's really been able to block them. They've got a 92%, like you said, accuracy of this play. So I think that, that uh, people still can't figure out how to, how to block the, the brotherly shove. No, definitely not, Marnie. But I, I just want to uh, say, appreciate you for giving me the time today. Before we get off of here, just wanted to see if you had uh, any projects that you're working on. Any Is there going to be any new adventures with uh, Freddie and Fumble? Any new books or anything coming up uh, that people need to need to know about that you got going on? <laughs> well, yes, there are. So currently there are nine books in the series, Philadelphia, the Carolinas, Atlanta, Pittsburgh, Chicago, Green Bay, Dallas-Fort Worth, Tampa Bay, and our newest book, which um, was really fun to do. We teamed up with the Pro Football Hall of Fame and Freddie and Fumble and Goldie, with the, who's the um, mascot for the Pro Football Hall of Fame, and Marion traveled all around Canton, Ohio, and then they made their way to the Pro Football Hall of Fame to see all the cool sights and everything that goes on during Enshrinement Week and the Pro Football Hall of Fame. So that's our newest book. All those books are available at um, GameDayInTheUSA.com or on Amazon too. Uh, for the Football um, Hall of Fame book, you have to go to the Pro Football Hall of Fame to get that book. But then I'm currently working on Game Day in Kansas City, and I'm working okay. on that book. Yeah, so I'm very excited about that. That'll be lots of fun. And my co-author on that book is Julie Green, uh, Super Bowl quarterback, Trent Green's wife. And Julie's amazing and a mom, Fantastic. so it's lots of fun. Yeah, and then I'm also working on Game Day in Denver, with Lisa Atwater, Steve Atwater's wife. So lots of cool stuff. And you know, in each book, with the exception of Philadelphia, Freddie has a tour guide to show her around the city. So some of the cool things, like Game Day of Pittsburgh, Freddie's tour guide is a young man named Hugh. He was autistic. Hugh is my college roommate's son, kind of like what I talked about a little bit yeah. earlier on in the show. And we're going to be able to highlight some um, kids that have maybe some... Um, Brain, uh, brain awareness, stuff like that in our game day in Denver and nut allergies in Kansas City. Celebrate kids and things that are going on in their lives that might not seem like anything major. And But we want to make sure that we acknowledge kids that have different things going on and so that everybody feels included and celebrated and important. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing stuff, guys. So make sure everyone uh, check out the uh, game day in the USA series. Uh, Marnie's working on some new books for her. They already got nine books. So uh, just going to keep coming. So very exciting stuff. And Marnie, uh, definitely thank you for uh, giving us a little bit of your time today. Uh, thank you, James. You know, fly Eagles flying. Let's go, Phils. Let's you go, know? Phils. Huge, huge Let's game go. tonight. Looking to yep. go back to the NLCS. Uh, but we'll see you guys live Friday, 7 p.m. Eastern, to talk more stuff about the Eagles. We'll see you then.